Hello and good day. I'm Giver Plata here to present our study for the application of image processing programs in color analysis of wood photo degradation. With special thanks to my co-author and advisor, Dr. Ramon M. De Los Santos for their guidance. The presentation will have the following structure. Number one, there will be a segment for the backgrounds on UV radiation and how it affects wood. This is followed by the presentation of the research questions. Then there will be a brief overview of the methodology in using image processing programs. Afterwards, an overview into the most important results. And finally, key takeaways will be articulated in the conclusion and recommendations. First of all, we look into the significance of this study. Our research demonstrates the significance of improvising methods and setups in STEM education to analyze various physical phenomena amidst the COVID-19 pandemic. In the literature, most photodegradation studies process their samples through photoradiation in the laboratory. However, that is not always available for students depending on the circumstances. Additionally, the study will look to investigate the photodegradation effect onto wood samples that have limited known results to our best knowledge. As mentioned, this will be done through color change analysis and FTIR, ATR spectroscopy. Onto the background. It is known that UV emits high energy and high frequency radiation. Despite that, UV is generally only capable of penetrating objects like wood at surface level. So the penetration is not too deep, only in the micron range at most. In UV radiation of wood, it is lignin that absorbs most of the radiation, with the rest absorbed by cellulose or hemicellulose. The absorbance of UV radiation triggers free radical formation, which causes rearrangement of bonds, thus provides the opportunity for oxidation in the wood species. As a result, the lignin is expected to degrade and other components are formed, such as carbonyls and carboxins. Through our significance and background of study, we are able to form our research questions. Particularly, we wish to investigate how our chosen processing programs can verify or suggest photo degradation. Most studies investigate the color changes directly with a spectral photometer, but we investigate alternative methods and learn if the same effects may be observed in such a way. Additionally, we wish to investigate changes in the appearance of our chosen wood sample, Tangile. Being a service phenomenon, photo degradation is expected to change the appearance of wood as observed in the literature. We aim to observe similar changes should the study support other known and accepted observations from other wood species. Upon investigating any changes in appearance, we wish to confirm compositional changes in the wood polymer structure. Should the study support other accepted observations, then the lignin should decompose and decrease in its content. While the more detailed process will be found in our paper, for now here is our overview for the methodology. For UV light exposure, a germicidal lamp was used and was enclosed in a wooden box with the wood samples propped up on the side facing the lamp, which was attached to a trolley. Samples were exposed at hourly intervals up to three hours. For safety reasons, it is strongly recommended that the UV tests are done away from any human contact or other parts that may be affected during testing. Holes were made on the sides of the box to expel any ozone that may have formed during testing. For picture taking, the top of the box was removed. On the right is the image capture setup for the samples before and after exposure. The camera distance was kept constant with a tripod and the samples were placed flat on the table and on top of a sheet of paper to give the samples the same white background. Pictures were also taken at the same time for consistency. After pictures were taken, the photos were processed in image J. The original photo was split into colored channels to the process mentioned in the slide. There were three colored channels formed for the same original image, which was used to get the color images later on. It was ensured that there was enough screen space to properly organize the three colored channels so that the data collection was smooth and more efficient. The process on this slide further elaborates on the steps taken to get the color measurements of the image that was split into colored channels. It is necessary to set a scale so that the measurements return in the preferred units instead of pixels. The scale for this study is found on the slide. A rectangle near the center of the color channel was created for the color measurement. Using the measure function, the color measurement was taken as an average. An example of this is encircled on the diagram to the right 
for the red color channel of the Tangile Woods. To the right, it is also represented by the minimum and maximum values measured along the red scale. This was repeated for the green and blue color channels with their results recorded appropriately. The more detailed process is in the paper, especially on how to automate this process should there be more samples later on. It is necessary to convert the values measured in image J, which are in RGB coordinates into CIE lab coordinates, which is the set of coordinates more commonly found in photodegradation studies of wood. Additionally, L star, A star, and B star coordinates provide more information towards the color changes, such as change in lightness in the L star scale, change in redness in the A star scale, and change in yellowness in the B star scale. With the RGB coordinates, the values were converted using the Python color math library by importing the sRGB color, LAB color, and convert color libraries. The values are converted through one function and circled as divided by 255 in order to scale the values between zero and one. Moreover, it is necessary to set constants for the observer angle and target illuminant, depending on the scale that was used for the experiment. After the methodology, we are able to present our most important results. For qualitative observations on our chosen Tangile wood, it is possible to observe slight color change from unexposed to exposed samples in the diagram on the left. The change may be minimal through the eyes, but nevertheless, the darkening is still there and visible. Since qualitative observations are arguable, it is necessary to support these changes quantitatively using the equation for total color change, which is found by taking the square roots of the sum of the changes in color along the L star, A star, and B star coordinates. The amount of color change is calculated to a value of 4.29, which according to a study by Kui et al, equates qualitatively to appreciable color change. Therefore, there was enough color change to suggest the photodegradation effect on a Tangile wood sample. We support this information by taking the absorbance ratios and using the spectral difference for unexposed and exposed samples of Tangile wood. The decrease in ratio for the 1340 over 1320 wave number suggests an increase in cellulose one content for our sample. This is supported by the positive values in the different spectra at the 1509 and 2300 to 1900 cent per centimeter wave number. We directly associate to lining bonds according to Tiaka et al. The positive value means that there is less detection at the exposed samples than the unexposed, indicating the degradation of lig lignin as a result of UV exposure. From this set of data, we can conclude that image processing software for color analysis was able to suggest wood photodegradation as an alternative method from spectrum photometers. Additionally, our chosen sample, Tangile Wood, was able to illustrate appreciable color change and that information is supported with the compositional changes in the Tangile wood polymers as a result of the photodegradation effect. For recommendations and further research, we suggest to expand the exposure time up to 12 hours to maintain consistency with accepted literature and to ensure that there are no anomalies in photodegradation after three hours. Additionally, whenever possible, it is recommended that results are reproduced for a laboratory spectrophotometer for more controlled results in an ideal setup. Here are the references that were highlighted in this presentation. Thank you for listening. We are now open to any questions or comments that you may have. Thank you very much.